Tarmac. Well, we've interviewed many eligible bachelors on this show, but our next guest, a Russian billionaire with a passion for self-portraits, has been causing quite a stir this morning. It certainly has. Now, hopefully, our live link won't go down for this one because we're ready to say hello to Alexander Orlov. We're very delighted to have him here. Good morning, Alexander. Ah, dobra utra. Good morning this morning. And may I say, what a great pleasure it is for you to have me on your show. You're absolutely <laughs> right. It is a great mm. pleasure to, to, have you, uh, to have you on the show. Um, how are you? It's very cold in Russia at the moment. Yes, yes, yes. It's very cold in Russia, but not as cold as in London at the moment. Look <laughs> at Mr. Philip. He's got snow in his fur. <laughs> <laughs> and also, you know, you are talking today about fur, and I think people who cannot grow their own fur should not borrow somebody else's. Fur looks best on the original owner. Imagine, imagine a meerkat without fur. What would it be? Probably Sergei. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point, very good point. Uh, now, we hear that you recently visited Coronation Street. How did you find it? South now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I meant, how did you find being on the street, Alexander? Ah, uh, it was small and a lot of cobbles. Were there uh, were a lot of famous people there? Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from you. Well, I uh, meet uh, Nozzy Norris, gossip queen of Weatherfield, and he tell me juicy nugget about naughty Steve McDonald. Uh -huh. Also, I meet the great Ken Barlow. He was a real gentleman. I also meet Deirdre Barlow. She's just sound like a real gentleman. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh Ken, oh, Ken. <laughs> are, there, uh, are there maybe other shows that you would like to take part in? Well, you know, I would like to appear on the cube because, as you know, I'm excellent at solving the Rubik's Cube. My claws are perfect for peel off the little colored stickers and put them back in different <laughs> position. It's exactly what I used to do. Also, <laughs> I would like to do, um, I'm a celebrity, how did I get here? You know, that yes. one is good because I have no problem with slimy, creepy, crawly creatures. <laughs> also, I don't mind insects, so, you know, hmm. Tasty. <laughs> mm, well, yeah, perfect, perfect. I would want to find out whether he can skate later on as well, because dancing, dancing on ice might be good. Meerkat on ice. Yeah, that would be very good. You, um, you've written some, uh, some, some books as well, some story books. What, uh, what was the inspiration behind those? Well, you know, Mr. Philip, it was actually you who gave me the perspiration. One night, <laughs> I was lying in my massive bed reading To Dream a Dream. The Amazing Life of Philip Schofield, yeah. written by <laughs> Piers Morgan. And it was such a page flipper, you know, I couldn't put it down. And believe me, I tried. So it inspired me to write my own bedtime reading stories. So yeah. I write meerkat tales. And, wh and what are the books about, Alexander? Well, they are the amazing books which are all written from the inside of my own head. And they tell the adventures and story tales of my friends and fellow villagers in Mirkovo. For example, in Sergei's book, he finally go into outer space in big rocket, you know going into space have been his ambition ever since he was kicked out of the Meerkat space program for make pretend moon landing in his garage. <laughs> <laughs> in my book, I become superhero, the mysterious night cat who battle evil villain on Moscow rooftops. All of books are very thrilly and full of adventure. So please, go by. So what was it like working with the other Meerkats on the books? <laughs> I wouldn't say I worked with the other villagers. In fact, I would say that they are do uh, nothing really. All books are think up uh, expertly by me and dictated by me and typed not so expertly by Sergei. Publishers say they've never seen so many mistakes, not since your book, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it cost me it cost me a fortune in correcting fluid. Well, let me tell you that that book by Piers Morgan was actually a pirate. <laughs> he did not have my permission to write that book, so oh. there you go. I've been wanting for years to say that out loud, but there you Revenge. go. Thank you, thank you. Now, Jonathan Ross, who, as you know, is a very well-known television uh. presenter here, he said on his show recently that he thinks you would make a fantastic Bond villain. So what do you think of that? <laughs> oh, Jonathan, he's such a character. <laughs> they always have little joke, you know, as to who is the most evil. And I think that Jonathan forgets that speech impediment and evil goatee beard are number one requirement for Bond villain. No, <laughs> net, net, net. I would not be the villain. I would be Mr. Bond himself. Which yeah. Bond would you be? Oh, well, I would get my inspiration from the greatest Bond of all time, Mr. Roger Moore. Yeah? Mm. Would, you, would you like to see my impression of Roger Moore? Very much. Yes, please. Uh, okay, okay. Now here, this is Roger Moore acting to the left. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Roger Moore acting to the right. Huh. 
And now, this is Mr. Roger Moore looking very, very surprised. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, is good. fantastic. That's brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Well, it's not long till Christmas now. What are ah. your plans for Christmas, Alexander? What will you be doing? Well, on Christmas Day, I am always wake up early by Sergei, who gets very excited about open presents. And, you know, I don't blame him. Who wouldn't be excited to unwrap a brand new pack of floppy disk labels? <laughs> <laughs> then, Sergei and I will prepare the dinner, you know. I will drink the beetle juice and he will do everything else. Uh, you know, slugs in blankets, the roast scorpions with all the trimmings and fluffy Mirkovo puddings. Maybe later I will invite the villagers and the Russian Philharmonic Orchestra plus Cliff Richard for a little <laughs> sing-song, you know, just normal, low-key, nothing special Christmas. How about you? Well, uh, can I come oh. round to yours? I think that sounds yeah, great. Yeah, nothing can yeah. compared come. to that. Thank Please you. Please come. I would just like to say now, Suraj Ditzvum. Oh, what could you say it again? Suraj Ditzvum. Suraj Ditzvum. Suraj Ditzvum. Oh, what does that mean? It means, please don't smoke in this carriage. <laughs> <laughs> no, it means Merry Christmas! Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. Yes. Christmas. So Merry Christmas! Uh, it's great, it great pleasure to talk to you. One of my most favourite interviews ever, I think. Oh. Try, to just... Try to hold the book a little higher. OK. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There you go. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, <laughs> Make that tales. Those are the books that we're talking about. Absolutely brilliant. I'm and officially thank you in very love. Much indeed. Isn't he gorgeous? Just oh, <laughs> stunning. Right, no semi-final of...